um, the Ethereum roadmap doesn't end here, right? In fact, we have a, another major catalyst sometime in the next maybe six to 12 months or so. That is what we are calling the merge and the end of uh, proof of work issuance and the full migration to the beacon chain of proof of stake. Uh, Squish, you put out this idea of the, the triple halvening, right? Uh, and I, I, I want to like find out from you at what point we are in the cycle and what's coming in the future. So is this the, the first happening in the triple happening or like, where are we now and what's coming ahead for the Ethereum roadmap as part of the framework that you've laid out? Um, yeah. So first this is, this is a 30% uh, reduction in cell pressure. So it's around uh, half of the effect of a Bitcoin happening. Uh, and then uh, the other 2.5 uh, halvenings come from the proof of stake merge, which is why the merge is such a such an important thing for price. And obviously, it's just it's the linchpin of of my thesis. I think it's the linchpin of a lot of Ethereum investors uh, view of the asset is that this proof of stake uh, merge is so important. Um, and then as far as what, what's going to happen going forward and how that'll affect price, um, you know, I would encourage people to think about the supply of these assets in terms of their circulating supply. Uh, and so what that means is, you know, for Bitcoin, it's famously a fixed supply, 21 million that will ever exist. But I would encourage people to think about it in terms of the amount in circulation, which is not fixed. That's actually increasing because of the block reward. Right. Uh, and the reason I think that's important is because you would never look at the amount of oil in the whole world uh, that's inaccessible. So, like, if I discovered a new oil reserve far away that no one could ever get at, uh, it's not going to reduce the price of oil. But if I discover a new oil reserve that people can actually add to circulating supply, that would. Uh, and so, circulating supply is what counts. Uh, and the thing that's pretty wild to think about is that for uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum in their entire history with the price going up as much as it has, uh, it's done so in the face of an increasing circulating supply. Um, and for Bitcoin in particular, this has been the case because it's already been through three halving events. And so the rate at which that supply increases have been, has been cut by 50% three times. Uh, so uh, that is an 87.5% reduction kind of if you, if you do all three of Bitcoin's halving events uh, together. 83.7, uh, 83.5 percent reduction in uh, the inflation rate of circulating supply, um, and uh, Ethereum has gone through none of that. So the inflation rate uh, for Ethereum has not gone through halvings, uh, and yet the price has continued to go up. Um, so what does that mean? It means when Ethereum supply is increasing, there are enough new buyers. They just keep buying the new Ether, and they buy it at the same or higher price so that the overall price can keep going up. Um, and so with EIP-1559, suddenly uh, there's gonna be 30% less selling pressure from the miners, which means there's just gonna be less ether uh, out there to buy. That's the ether that's been burned, right? And so if, if people have been buying this ether and buying it so much that the price was going up, even if this new supply is coming online, now those same buyers don't have ether to buy. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of the catalyst that's going to affect the supply. Uh, and my argument for the triple halving is that uh, the proof of stake merge kind of accentuates this even further. And it brings us to a total 90% decrease in circulating supply, which is more than three halvings worth of decrease. Uh, and that's a huge catalyst uh, for the price. Um, and the last thing I want to point out is that in the history of Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, the circulating supply has always been increasing. Obviously, Bitcoin has a fixed supply, um, but the amount in circulation has always been increasing because of the block reward. Um, after the merge, it's incredibly possible that Ethereum will be a deflationary asset. Um, and it's important to note that means that for the first time ever, there will be a crypto asset uh, that actually has a static or a decreasing supply. Uh, Ethereum will actually be able to claim something that Bitcoin has not been able to claim uh, because while Bitcoin has a fixed supply, um, Ethereum, it, Bitcoin's, sorry, while Bitcoin has had a fixed supply, the circulating supply has always been increasing. Um, for Ethereum, circulating supply equals the total supply. And when that's decreasing, I think we're going to see something we've never seen before. We've never seen the price of these assets when the actual total supply has gone down. And so models for what the price is going to do based on how the price action has happened in previous cycles, I think they're going to fly out the window. 
because uh, the supply demand de supply the, the supply demand dynamics are completely different. What's also crazy about this squish is that this is not happening like once every four years. This is happening during a very consolidated period of time. We're talking about in the next six to twelve months, all of these triple happening events will happen. Right? This is today. It's thirty percent of the way, or you know, thirty percent of, of one happening, as you said. And then we're, we're, we're like, once the merge goes, then that's the rest of it you're talking about. 